What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Python Panda sentiment analysis and finance tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be doing is actually working with our data now um, and starting to do our analysis. So the first thing that we need to do though is we need to actually look at this data. So uh, the, the gzip file for me is located right here and for me I'm going to use 7-zip to unzip it. You can use whatever the heck you want. If you don't have 7-zip and you don't know how else to unzip it, go ahead and use download 7-zip online and to extract it. And when you extract it, here it is, stocks underscore syntax dot CSV, and it's about 381 megabytes. So we can open that up into Notepad++, might take a second, and here we have all the data. So this first row here is, uh, you know, basically our, header, our headings. So the first column here we have is ID, that's just the self-incrementing ID. Um, and that was mostly for the database. We're going to end up mixing that in a moment. Then we have time, and this is our timestamp. Okay, so this is Unix time for anyone who's not familiar. Uh, that's another thing that's really hard. We have to convert out of Unix and all of that, but uh, it's easy enough here. And so we'll fix that. Uh, type, type corresponds to the stock in this case. Uh, so Apple um, is what's here. Then we have value. Value is the sentiment value at that moment. Okay, so the sentiment reading that we were inputting into this database. And then we have open, close, high, low, and that is stock price at the time. We don't have anything right here for Apple, but in just a few moments, basically a few seconds later, uh, we start inputting the stock prices. Um, and it's like that all the way down, except for maybe the last few rows might not have stock prices. Uh, looks like they do so uh, everything actually does have stock prices uh, now uh, besides the first few rows then we have the moving averages so the ma100 250 500 5000 those are the moving averages of the actual sentiment value okay and they don't have minimum so this that's why that's negative one negative one negative one to start so until there is 5000 updates you might not want to trust uh, the moving averages just yet so that's that that's the data now what we want to do is kind of manipulate this data for exactly our purposes. Uh, first of all, we don't need to be reading in the ID every time. That's a waste of space. Unix time, we want that in date time, then we'll drop the Unix time. Type, we do want to keep. Um, I kind of want to keep open, close, high, low. We're going to use that data uh, for this series. But if you have your own data, then you might not want to keep the open, high, low, close stuff. And then the MA100, 250, 500, 5000, um, you may or may not want to keep that. It's pretty quick to calculate it in pandas, but uh, I think maybe for now we'll leave it there. I don't know. Um, so anyways, uh, that's the data. Now we want to modify this data slightly. Okay, so uh, we'll minimize that, minimize this, and then we'll come over to our script. So as usual, we're going to import pandas as pd. From pandas, we want to import uh, data frame and then import matplotlib.py plot as plt from matplotlib import style again if you're not doing the style thing with us don't do it don't import it uh, and then import numpy as mp next up we're going to say style.use and we're going to use uh, ggplot again again if you're not using style don't do that and now <clears throat> we want to manipulate this data set how we want it. So we're going to say define modify uh, data set. And basically, let's say uh, first data frame equals pd.read underscore csv. And that is going to be, uh, for me, located in x colon uh, forward slash sentiment slash stocks underscore sent dex.csv. That's where mine is. So obviously use wherever yours is. Um, you know, that's where you're, you know, what file you're going to use, obviously. So then we're going to say df uh, time equals pd.2 underscore date time. And then we're going to do df. Um, Time, and then right now our unit is s for seconds, so that's how it knows how to read it. Um, so basically, two date time. What column is being converted to date time? 
and then what unit is that in right now okay so that should hopefully uh, convert our time column now the next thing we can do is DF equals DF dot set index and we want to set the index to time so right now it would be that the first row or first column rather which was you know the ID okay so now what we can do is print DF dot head just to see where we're at let's save that come down here modify data uh, I really want to capitalize that S so let's fix that modify data set like that okay let's save and run that see what we got might take a second it's a rather large file <clears throat> might take a few seconds apparently um, there we go okay so now you can see it act it, it converted our timestamps okay we have nan which is not a number um, and pandas actually ho ha handles not a number very well um, We've got our timestamps anyway here for Apple, right? October fifteenth, twenty twelve. Um, then you know we've got our moving averages and all that, and it just pastes it twice because this is just it ran out of space to put it here, so it adds this little you know slash, and then it says your index again since it assumes the index is basically what we're most curious to look at the data uh, organized by, I guess. So that's why it prints index twice, but it's not really there twice. So, uh, we're happy with that, so let's go ahead and close that. We're getting exactly you know, what, what we're expecting. So, the next thing we want to do is we don't really care about ID anymore, so we can go ahead and del df ID, okay? And that's enough for now. We, you, if you wanted, you can get rid of the times. Um, you can also get rid of the moving averages. So, maybe we might do that later on uh, because we're probably going to generate very unique um, moving averages so those might be absolutely worthless to us later on and they are they do take up a lot of space uh, as far as you know how large this file is if we were to need to get rid of them it would be better um, and in fact I I guess we, we could just get I don't know we might get rid of them I haven't decided yet so anyway uh, df.2 underscore CSV now now that we've modified this right we've converted to date time and we've gotten rid of ID. Now that we've modified that, let's go ahead and save it because every time to modify it, you're gonna have to like go through that processing time, right? And so if you only if you're gonna do this modification every time, it just makes sense to go ahead and modify it and save the new version. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna save that as to x colon um, sentiment and stocks underscore sentex underscore dates dot csv. And in fact, let's go ahead and say this as full. Down the, down the road, you might want to just kind of do some quick testing of stuff. And so you can make a shorter one. So this is full. We could edit this and chop off most of the data and just call it short. And that way, we don't have to wait for this super long processing time. For now, we'll just call it full. And that should be really all we need to do. So let's go ahead and save that. And start syntax data CSV. Cool. All right, let's run that real quick. Uh, it's probably going to take just as long as the last time. Next time we run through all these processes, I'll try to uh, talk more while it's, or talk over the processing time. So anyway, um, so what that's going to do is it's going to save it to our file for us in uh, the format that we are hoping for. Um, when it's done here, it's not going to print out anything, so I guess we'll know when it spits out another one of these. But now I guess we can talk about what we're going to do next. So I'll probably cut off the video here and we'll continue on in the next video. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to work on um, how can we access a single bit of data for a specific company? So let's say we want to plot um, Bank of America. Okay, so how can we do that and plot that information? Um, so that's probably what we'll go through next time. We'll also work on um, doing maybe like the moving averages, stuff like that. Um, and let's see here. I want to move over to send and see if it's. So at least started uh, the file, but I guess it's just building it or something. Um, I just hate to cut it off because I don't know. I'd cut off the video if I was positive that this was going to uh, complete. Uh, but I hate to cut it off and then have to fix it later. So 
Anyway, uh, there we go, just in time. So it's a little bit bigger probably because a date stamp takes up more space than a Unix stamp, but that just tells you why we might want to remove uh, the moving average column eventually, uh, just because we're not actually using it. Um, so that would be a lot smaller. So anyways, uh, that's going to conclude this video. In the next video, we'll work on how we can go through this data set. Um, and the other thing, hmm, let me kind of think. Yeah, okay. Anyway, the other thing we could have done too is removed maybe um, the Bitcoin stuff since we're not going to use that. We could have chopped that out as well, but um, this will do for now. Anyway, that's going to conclude this video. If you have any questions or comments, something not working out for you, uh, feel free to leave those below in the comment section. Uh, let's make sure uh, we have this other one open. Notepad++ is angry. Hopefully we can open it now. So you've got your time, type, value, okay. So everything's good. So that's what we expected. So anyway, that's going to conclude this video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.